Hello and welcome to today's exercise physiology screencast. The focus is energy for exercise. Now for us to have a real understanding of how we store and use energy for muscular contractions within exercise, it's absolutely vital that we understand something called adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so adenosine triphosphate can also be termed ATP, and that is fine for your notes, but I think I want it to be fine in the exam, but I think for now you need to write down this with the bracketed ATP after it. So in terms of what adenosine triphosphate looks like, we can use the name here. So adenosine triphosphate actually consists of one adenosine molecule and three phosphate groups. Now, to get a bit of an understanding of why adenosine triphosphate is so important, we need to be able to describe what it is. So in terms of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, it is the energy currency of the body. Now, what does that mean? It means, let's think of currency in another way in terms of money. Okay, so if we think about the fact you go on holiday, you go on holiday somewhere in the European Union, okay? And if you go on holiday somewhere in Europe, you have to turn your money, your money of pounds, into euros. So you put it into the currency of the country you're going to. When you do that, it allows you to spend your money in a different country. Now, in order for us to spend our energy for muscular contractions, we have to use ATP. It's the only way we can use energy in our body. So why is it so important to kind of summarize what I've just said there? It's the only usable energy source in the body. So that's what it is, the energy currency in the body. Why is it so important? It's the only way we can use energy in the body. So those two things really do emphasize the importance of adenosine triphosphate when we are performing uh, kind of muscular contractions within exercise. Now, in terms of where ATP is found, you might have picked up me talking about muscles, okay? So in terms of where it is specifically found, ATP is found in the muscle sarcoplasm, as you can see here. So it's located in its cross-sectional uh, kind of view of a muscle there. You can see the uh, ATP, we can't see ATP, but that is where it's located in here in the muscle sarcoplasm. And the final thing I just wanted to get across to you is, you know, if ATP is our only usable energy source, if it's the energy currency of our body, if it's located in the muscle sarcoplasm, how long does it allow us to, to use that energy for? Okay, well it actually gives us only two to three seconds of high intensity anaerobic work. Okay, so why is it high intensity? Because when you start exercising from doing nothing, okay, that is high intensity. The change in intensities from sitting there doing nothing to doing something quite exhausting or moving, that makes it high intensity. And it makes it anaerobic because within two to three seconds, okay, you do not have chance to get oxygen into your body to use it to help you create energy. So that is why it is there. So they're the key things you would need from that. So if these are our key, I suppose, our foundation knowledge with regard to uh, adenosine triphosphate, okay? Energy currency in the body, only usable energy source in the body, stored in the muscle sarcoplasm and gives us two to three seconds of high intensity anaerobic work. Now what we need to have an understanding of is how exactly do we use ATP for energy, okay? So we know our knowledge about it, but how does this happen inside our muscle sarcoplasm, okay? So that is our last question we're gonna look into now, and I'm gonna show you visually how ATP is used to create energy, okay? So what I'm gonna ask you to do when I go on to this next slide now, okay, we're, I'm gonna show you ATP breakdown, okay? What I'm gonna ask you to do is to just watch, do not make notes until I tell you to, so you can see what is actually happening inside the muscle sarcoplasm when ATP is broken down. So if we start off there, we've got our adenosine molecule here, we've got our three phosphate groups here, and in between each of these three phosphates here, you can see this black line. Now this black line is there to symbolize something called a high energy bond. So if these phosphates are broken, it releases energy. So what happens specifically Remember, do not make notes at this point. Just watch to see what will happen. When we start exercising, this is the process that happens. Adenosine triphosphate, three phosphates, is broken down by an enzyme called ATPase. Okay, so ATPase is the enzyme, and it breaks off the third phosphate, like this. So 
it creates from here energy for us to work but also we have to have an understanding of kind of what is left over so if i said to you at this point now we've had adenosine triphosphate it's broken down by atpase to release energy but that's not all we have to know so to put this into a kind of a little equation so you can now start writing when i put this next bit up you can see onto here if we look at it like this you've basically got this so we've got ATP, which is what we started with, was broken down by ATPAs, as you can see with the arrow going that way, okay? And this left us ADP plus P plus E, energy. So let me explain that a little bit more. So adenosine triphosphate was when the three phosphates were joined together by the high energy bond, but ATPAs broke that down. That left us with adenosine diphosphate so adenosine one two diphosphate okay but we have to remember that there is still so plus a spare phosphate here plus the energy that was released um, by the breakdown um, of the, the second and third phosphates okay so that is why that equation is like that okay ATP broken down by ATPase into ADP, which is this here, plus the P, which is here, plus the energy, which was there, which allows us to get that two to three seconds of work. So that's what you have to know. I think it's really important you saw it first before you write it down, and that is what you would need. So we need to know the start fuel here, the enzyme that breaks it down, and then what is left over, plus the energy that allows us to get that two to three seconds work okay and if i just kind of move down from here um if you want to put this in a slightly different way um i'll put it into a, you know with headings so you, this is it just a, a shorthand that you could use this will be fine in the exam okay but if you wanted to just make sure you knew exactly what you were writing about it would look like this the fuel was atp okay the enzyme that was used to break atp down was atpase and then the product from that reaction, what was left as a result of it was adenosine diphosphate, adenosine plus two phosphate, okay, plus the spare phosphate, plus energy, okay, the E. And that left ADP plus P plus E as a summarized as it is up here. Okay, so that is what you would need in your answer. You can do it in either way. You can do it like this in the equation form, or you can do it like this, um, which is a little bit more longhand, I suppose. Both the same, both exactly the same process, and both vitally important, uh, whichever way you decide to go with. I think both should be in your notes for now, and then you can pick the one you want to use uh, when you're in the lesson. Okay, so hopefully you can see them. We looked at the, the key characteristics of ATP, energy currency in the body, only usable energy source. Um, we also had a look at the fact that it's located in the muscle cycle. So this slide has allowed us to see actually how ATP is broken down to give us energy but if you remember how long it gave us energy for it was only two to three seconds now that is a problem because ATP if it runs out after three seconds how do we carry on working how do we carry on uh, giving muscle muscle contractions for exercise that takes us over three seconds and in the lesson we're going to have a look at how we recharge or resynthesize ATP using different energy systems. Okay, so make good notes on this, and I shall see you in tomorrow's lesson.